broadcasting networks, they say the bulk of their contributions actually come from the um, big corporations in the United States. But the religious right is a complex coalition, according to Larry Hickam, who's been studying this for some time. Uh, it's a complex coalition of independent organizations, ranging from those well-known that we've been talking about, and wealthy international, with wealthy international television networks like CBN, to smaller uh, organizations with just a few TV stations or a small network here and there. But they also are interlocked with, as I said, corporate America and the government. For instance, there are many, many organizations which they form. One particularly is called the Full Gospel Businessmen's Fellowship International. Now, these are all fundamentalists, uh, including a hodgepodge of charismatics and, and uh, all that type, Pentecostals. And these, in some parts of the country, particularly in the Sunbelt State, this organization, uh, the Full Gospel Businessmen's Fellowship, called the FGB. MFI. It seemed like they could come up with a better acronym than that. Anyway, they're made up largely of people who manage the military-industrial complex. President Reagan has close ties with the organization, and a lot of his top advisors are uh, from this organization. And they're, uh, you know, they believe in the Armageddon and the Second Coming, and we're in the last days and all like that. So they. These people have v meetings from time to time. Some of them are low-key or informal. Some of them are more highly organized. But they have breakfasts where, breakfasts where they talk about uh, the coming of Jesus and uh, how nuclear weapons will lead to the second coming of Jesus. Yeah. And so, uh, and so many of these people see there's a difference. The people who believe in the rapture, the, some of them who believe that they're going to be raptured, you know, taken up to heaven, before just before the Big Bang. So they're not sweating World War III at all. They don't care. And some of these people are in high in the government and, as I said, just involved in the military-industrial complex and even working with nuclear weapons systems. Now, there are other people who believe in the rapture. They believe that they're going to fry a while, suffer a little bit, <laughs> before they're raptured. And then Robertson feels that they'll go through the whole thing, but uh, God will kind of take it easy on them, protect them a bit from it. The good guys. Yeah. So as the... The uh, person here says he wrote the article, the idea that a key network of key workers in the military-industrial complex, along with others who are key decision makers in a nuclear chain of command, may all be, you know, have these expectations of Armageddon and how great it's going to be, makes you kind of worry a bit. <laughs> Well, there's something even more uh, worrisome about this whole thing, and that is that Ronald Reagan himself believes in yeah. the rapture and uh, Armageddon. There's an article in some uh, cultural journal that I saw that indicates that at 12 different occasions, Reagan has spoken seriously about the uh, rapture and his belief that uh, nuclear war might possibly be the Armageddon that had been predicted in uh, Revelations. And at this time, the good people like him and Jerry Falwell would uh, ascend to heaven while the rest of us would uh, fly. This is particularly scary as we move into the last year or so of the Reagan administration because if a tenth of the stories that we've been reporting on alternative views are true concerning the scandals in the Iran-Contra affair and the entire Reagan administration, there's been nothing but a series of one crimes after another. If all of these stories break in the mass uh, media, there's no question but that Reagan will be impeached. So the frightening scenario is that just as he's about to go, he decides that uh, we'll all go together when we go, as Tom Lehrer <laughs> used to sing in the 1950s, and it's time uh, for the rapture uh, to come and the buttons to uh, be pushed. So I hope that if there's a attempt to impeach Reagan, there's also someone that has a very close uh, look at the uh, nuclear weapons uh, buttons to keep the old guy from... Uh, blowing us all away as he goes out. Well, as the, this article continues, it talks about these people are, you know, just not a bunch of Ray, Reagan crazies. Here, so the Secretary of Defense built uh, two prayer rooms at the Pentagon. Mm -hmm. And they have these organized Bible study groups for admirals and uh, generals in the Pentagon, members of Congress and their aides. 
And here are some of the people who, who, are, who go to these prayer rooms at the Secretary of Defense. It's people like Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Commandant of the Marine Corps, Chief of Naval Operations, Chief of Staff of the Army. I and mean, we're not talking about just a bunch of crazy underlings. We're talking about the big people who've got their fingers on the button up there. According to the religious right, Armageddon will occur as a result of a clash between the Soviet Union and the United States in the Middle East. Well, the situation in the Persian Gulf looms rather large and significant. John Stockwell gives his opinion. President Reagan has avoided uh, confrontation in the Gulf for, for six years now. They've been shooting up oil tankers, and that's terribly threatening. I mean, if, yeah. if our, you know, our leaders wanted some, that's the sort of thing. I mean, the Angolan operation, because the Soviets could theoretically put in a submarine base that would threaten the South Atlantic to cut off the flow of oil, you know, and the tankers coming up through the South Atlantic, that was the rationale that they've, they were using for that thing. And here we have countries that are actually strafing and shooting and sinking. Uh, oil tankers, and we've done nothing about it. And the reason, I submit, is geographical. Uh, can you imagine what Reagan would do if Nicaragua shot up an oil tanker, or if Grenada had, or, you know, our Q or some country, or, or Libya, if, if Gaddafi had ordered an oil tanker in the Mediterranean to be shot up? But the reason is that to fight a war way around on the backside, very hard to get to, very hard to resupply, very hard to get the American people, you know, deeply involved. Uh, and so they have avoided time after time a provocation, in addition to which they don't want to do anything to push Iran in the direction of the Soviet Union. The, the Soviets are no more happy with Khomeini than, you know, than we are. And uh, a, an open heavy-duty attack on, on Iran uh, could, could cost us the influence that we've had over the years in that country that's right on the Soviet border. Now, Mr. Reagan has clearly gotten involved, the provocations, putting our ships in there where they're right in the way where they could get shot up, and two of them have been attacked uh, in the Stark more dramatically, and then the huge focus of interest on the Stark. Y you people are drawing parallels in the question marks. The Marines in the barracks in Beirut in 1983 were not allowed to carry bullets in their guns, the ones guarding the the barracks, you know, were not allowed to have armed weapons. Who ended up being killed oh, in yeah. bombings. And, and uh, you know, this is perfectly open now. We had intercepts that this barracks was going to be targeted, and they didn't take the precautions of putting the big concrete things so a truck going in would have to go like this, which would give you time to react and shoot out its tires. That it's very basic in a base like that. They left them exposed. And then you have this, this Stark over there uh, just not defending itself at all. Uh, so you have, now, all of which is to say that they have clearly targeted, Reagan has clearly targeted the Gulf now. And uh, the obvious uh, purpose would be to get the world attention off of the hearings. Right. But I don't think he wants to get involved in a big war there. I think he wants some macho, and there may be some more missiles fired in different directions maybe some bombing and whatnot, but I don't believe he wants to get involved in a war there, but he would like to be able to turn up the fire every now and then there to draw attention off over, over in Washington and the hearings. And God knows, yeah. maybe heat it up enough that he can eventually pull off the invasion of Nicaragua. I'm still, by the way, my, my wager, macabre, sad, sick wager in 81, uh, that, the, that the United States would invade Nicaragua, and I have you not... You see that as more likely than a war in the uh, I, Gulf? Yeah, and I have not retracted yeah. that. I believe that Reagan is still trying very hard and uh, very likely will succeed. I have a little item here that was in the nation. Christopher Hitchens again, this time at the end of May. Uh, Ronald Reagan was speaking to the American Newspaper Publishers Association in May, and said for the first time, quote, I do not intend to leave such a crisis for the next American president, unquote. And that was referring to the Sandinistas. This is in May now. And it was bolstered by the following peerless citation, quote, there was a line attributed to Lenin, the road to America leads through Mexico. This is, <laughs> here we go again. Oh, really? <laughs> in the fall of 85, Reagan had told oh, Ted Koppel God. of ABC that he's often quoted Lenin's statement that, quote, we will take Eastern Europe, we will organize the hordes of Asia, and then we will move into Latin America and we won't have to take the United States. 
It will fall into our outstretched hands like overripe fruit. Well, the Library of Congress reports that they've often been asked to find as